have a great day. Bloom Daddy filling in today. I want to talk about New Year's resolutions because, well, let's face it. We all have them, and most of us fail at them. Lee Richardson, brain health coach, consultant, devoting her life to studying human behavior, how the brain works, joining us now. Lee, let's start with New Year's resolutions. Why do so many people fail at them? Well, I think so many people focus on, you know, what they're trying to fix. I need to lose weight. I need to save more money. I need to quit spending so much money. They're focusing on the negative that they're trying to fix. And if they flip that and they looked at it from the positive, what do I do really well? You know, um, okay, with my weight, I really, it's, I manage the amount of carbs that I eat. With my money, I don't overspend, it's impulsive spending. But identify what you really need to work on and focus on the good, the positive. Oh, I did that so well. You know what, that makes me want to do it again. That sounds very, very easy and simple, and it is. But then let's get back to why do so many people fail? Do they because set the bar too high? Well, I think they throw it. They throw the bar out there, mm-hmm. and they they haven't thought it through. You know, I honestly believe if you don't know what you're looking for, you're not going to find it. They throw it out there. They don't define it. They don't know what they're looking for. They haven't thought thought about. Okay, what behavior do I need to change? It's just, oh, at the end of the year, particularly this year, you know, we're thinking, oh, I just, I want 2022 to be so much better. And we may not really know how we want it to be better. We just know we want it to be better. So the first thing that comes to mind, we'll throw a resolution out there. All right. So what should people let go of in 2022 and why? I think we need to let go we need to forgive and forget. We need, we need to let go of our normal things that we lost in 2021 and quit trying to bring them back and recreate them and open their heart, be open to receive what 2022 has to offer us and look for opportunities. Uh, look, look for those opportunities. They're out there. They're not easy to find, but they are out there. What, give me some pointers as far as setting attainable goals and how to reach them. Attainable goals, smart goals, specific, measurable, accurate, reliable, and timely. I mean, if you really define it and, and make them realistic, it's, I've had people come in my office and say, you know what, I'm going to lose 20 pounds next month. Okay. Is that realistic? Probably not. So I'm going to lose five to seven pounds next month. So, you know, that's, that's something that's doable. And get this, get support from your family, from your friends. You know, get someone to help you, not necessarily hold you accountable, but to help you stay true to yourself. If this is something you really want to do, how can I help you? Talking to Lee Richardson right now, brain health coach and consultant. We're talking about how to set goals for the new year and actually reach them and stick to what you need to do to get to them. So let's turn to the pandemic, Lee. How, how, what's your advice as far as not letting the pandemic or the cumulative effects of nearly two years of the pandemic and not doing what you want to do impede an individual to getting where they want to be? Well, and, and 2021 is going to weigh heavy on our brain and in our heart because It was a cumulative. I mean, we were stuck in that hyper-aroused state, fight or flight or freeze. And we still kind of, that's that's in our autonomic nervous system. So that's on that subconscious level. I think what we have to do to let go of it is focus on the conscious level. Focus on what you can control. Focus on what you personally can impact with change. And we've got to just, there's so many things that we can't control, and there's so many things that I've become very aware of that I can't control, that I want to in 2021, but I just tend to focus on what I can control. I think a lot of people, when it comes to New Year's resolutions, they fail, and then they just throw in the towel. Instead of, you can fail and get right back on track. You know what I mean? I, I, I think a lot of people, once they fail, they say, well, you know what? I'm done. I'll wait till next year. When 
in reality, if you fail, let's say for a week, you don't go through your routine or you eat really, really bad, you can get right back on your routine a week later and just kind of ride it out and keep on going. I think people see that one failure as, well, that it's over. It doesn't have to be over. I think you're right. I think that little hit bump in the road happens and then we talk, then we get that negative chip chat going in our brain, you know, well, you can't do it. Um, there's no reason to even try again. You can't do it. And yes, you can. It's a bump in the road. And, and we all have that oh, self-defeating box that go through our heads sometimes. You know, I used to have these two good friends, the shoulds and the musts. I got rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> Out the door, huh? Out the door, I replaced them with the could. I could do that. And, you know, it was just a different way of thinking of it. So we've all got self-defeating thoughts, and we've got, when we, they're ants, they're automatic negative thoughts. They come in your brain so quick, you don't even know they were there. It's just all of a sudden, I'm mad, or I'm irritated, or I don't like this. And I didn't even realize what caused that. So, and I, I, talk to my clients all the time and I say, you know, when you, when you catch yourself all of a sudden going negative or not liking something, what did you just think? Stop. Check in with yourself. What did you just think? Because those thoughts are so, they're fast and furious. Lee, there is somebody out there listening right now who is specifically affected by COVID in some ongoing way, such as having long COVID or struggling with depression. What is your best advice for them? Get some help because, well, long COVID is, uh, the more I read about it, it is so overwhelming. And, you know, get, get some support, whether that's a counselor, a pastor, uh, a good friend or family member. But talk through it and think about, you know, it is what it is, but don't let it continue to weigh you down. Think, you know, process it. Get some help because it's, something that you know we tell ourselves oh just get over it get over it but after 20 months or more it's hard to just get over it all by yourself yeah and a lot of people a lot of people i think are embarrassed about getting help lee and they shouldn't be it is okay to not be okay yeah, that's that's one way of putting it. But why why don't people feel that way? Why do they feel? And, and I think I think things have changed. You know, again, now in in twenty, you know, going on twenty twenty two, the whole mental health thing. I don't think people view it as negatively as they did before. I think that there is what stops people from getting help is the stigma mm-hmm. around mental health. You know, there's public stigma, stigma. There's personal. There's institutional. I mean, I, I've had people say, I don't want to work with her. You know, half the time she can't even show up. She's got severe depression. So there's stigma around it. And what we've got to do, and it goes back to the book I wrote in 1990, you know, a long, not 1999, but a couple of years ago, and that is turn your brain on to get your game on. You know, if you hurt your leg, what do you do? You, you go, go to the doctor. Right. Yeah. If you get up and you feel like you just can't do it today, what do you do? You start having a negative conversation with yourself. Come on, Lee. You know, suck it up, buttercup. You got to do this. And that's the wrong conversation to have. We need to change the dialogue. And you know what? It's okay. It's just as okay to not feel well mentally as it is physically. No, I think that's a very good example. If you injure your leg, you go to the doctor. So many people don't realize that a mind injury whether it's depression or, or whatever it may be, is is treatable. Um, they don't think of it the same way. And honestly, until you said that, I didn't think of it the same way. And I think if more people view it in in that regard, then more and more people will go seek help for the mental aspect of things that are holding them back. I sure hope so, because... It's, it, we've got to. I mean, that's the biggest challenge that, that faces us and, and us globally is mental health. Yeah, I, I totally 100% agree. Lee, thank you so much for your time and I hope you have a great new year. Thank you. Same to you. All right. That is Lee Richardson, brain health coach, consultant.
just listening to Lee is soothing. Like she has one of those voices that is just soothing. She's a licensed professional counselor. She founded the Brain Performance Center in Dallas. I mean, she's also been in ICU twice with a brain injury. And all of this kind of fueled her need to understand how the brain works or why it might not work. And I think her example is perfect. You injure your arm, you injure your leg, you get a cut. What do you do? You go to the doctor, get treatment. But if you injure your your head, and I'm not talking about a physical injury, I'm talking about a mental injury, whether it's depression, uh, whatever it may be, you don't go get help. And I think you should view it the same way as any other body part. Go get the help you need. Fix yourself. You, you could be a better version of you. Bloom Daddy back after this.